What happens when humans and aliens are forced to live with each other? Well, the movie District 9 illustrates that perfectly well. Let me explain. Out of nowhere, aliens have landed above Johannesburg. Their spacecraft has hovered above the city for three months without any sort of interaction. As a natural response, the humans have decided to make the first move. They broke into the spacecraft and could identify over one million aliens. It turns out that their spacecraft is broken. They are legit stuck on Earth and are unable to continue their journey across space. After the collection of nearby CCTV footage, it's known that a large part of the ship, presumably an important piece of tech, has fallen off. This piece of tech is thought to be the solution to fix the problem. Our character Vickers is working for the MNU, Multinational United, a weapons manufacturer that is responsible for guarding the aliens and maintaining peace between the races. All 1 million aliens live in the slum area of District 9, an exclusive alien zone that is off-limits for humans. However, there are human criminals living in these zones as well. They mainly engage in criminal activity like weapon trade, gambling, and yes, uh, interracial prostitution as well. As of late, Wickes is responsible for managing the eviction of District 9. The plan is to move them over to the newer and bigger District 10. Easier said than done. Threats are present everywhere within District 9. It is hardly possible to survive there without armed security. Now, Wickes goes from house to house, knocking on doors and handing over papers to be signed. However, aliens and humans can communicate, meaning most understanding is based on human interpretation. And we know that sucks. Wickes is a hyperactive bureaucrat, of course, that, uh, like most humans, look down on the aliens. He enjoys his new position of power and doesn't shy away from showing it off. When he passes by a house that is located within the eviction zone of today, two aliens are brewing a mysterious liquid inside. When Wickes makes contact, one of the aliens flees through the back door. The other one steps out. Upon searching the house, he finds a cylinder and fiddles around with it. Don't touch. What isn't yours, my friends? You know, I don't trust anything that's... <laughs> You're right, Rick. Yep, I'll skip the meal for today. Thank you very much. And I apologize to you out there. Anyway, this guy is extremely confident with his new job. The way he goes through this stuff makes it look like he knows exactly what he's doing. But that's all for show. The aliens that were experimenting in here were, according to Vickers at least, criminals. In fact, every alien to him is a criminal, surprise, surprise. He is as ignorant as you would imagine a bureaucrat would be commissioned with the job to establish a mutual relationship between a race that he doesn't bother to understand. Inside the house, the alien with the red vest lives with his kit. Wickes shows his true colors. He is humiliating the alien and threatens to take away his child for no reason. Upon entering the shack, he finds various electronics. To him, proof of criminal activity, which obviously is ridiculous, but to him, it makes perfect sense. Before he can clear the space, he breaks into Puke Festival. Hmm, I wonder why. His temperature rises and his overall health declines. Some people would say, well deserved. However, as the day passes, his health gets even worse. He is dizzy, his nose emits black fluid, and his fingernails start to fall off. Something isn't right. Question, what is worse than having a bad day at work? Coming home from it while your wife has prepared a surprise party. Thank you, wife. Let's have some cake and tea with your family. Now, Wickes is not doing well. During the party, he eventually faints and is brought to the hospital. His arm that was injured during today is badly inflamed. As the doctor unwraps his bandage, he gets a shock of a lifetime. Wickes' arm has turned into an alien limb. It can't get more surreal. Mere moments later, troops storm in and take in Wickes while evacuating the whole place. As of now, he is treated like he was treating the aliens. Alright, this is bad. Once you are caught by a government or military, good luck escaping. He should have taken his symptoms more serious and contacted people in trust about his condition. He should have made sure that the footage that shows his contamination is securely stored. Because what happens next is that the MNU fabricates fake news about how he got contaminated, skewing the picture and making it much, much harder for him to survive and get appropriate help. He wakes up in a lab lying on a flat surface. Various tests are performed, his body is thoroughly scanned and he realizes that this thing is the reason for his transformation. Shit. Now what do you do in this situation? I reckon there isn't much that you can do. However, the alien weapons that the humans have collected over the years can't be used by humans. Therefore, Vickers is a perfect trial. 
The weapons require a biological compatibility that normal humans just don't possess. However, now that Wickers is slowly becoming an alien, he is the perfect candidate to explore these weapons. He is forced into questionable trials and tortured if he doesn't comply. He is soaked in sweat. Miserable is the best term to describe this situation. When they bring in an alive alien and force Wickers to shoot at him, he doesn't want to. He's starting to feel compassion with these aliens, slowly understanding what these entities have to go through on a daily basis. When his life is about to be taken as well, he takes the last chance and leaps at the doctors, resulting in his escape. But where can he go? His face is basically on every TV channel and every newspaper. The whole world is looking for him. The only place where he will be safe is, ironically enough, District 9 itself. His body by now is changing rapidly, his taste buds have already adapted and uh, his new food of choice is cat food. I eh, know, could be worse. If you need to escape this situation, I would suggest you get off the main land. Steal a boat, some food and off you go. You do not want to be a lab rat, right? And if that means you will have to starve in loneliness, then I think we can all agree that this is better on a nice island than in a dark alleyway covered in trash. He eventually hides in one of the alien shacks, not knowing that this is the same place where he harassed an alien family yesterday. Things are turning interesting. He begs them to let him stay, but naturally, the alien doesn't really like that. Underneath the floor is a secret lab containing high technology. The important piece of tech responsible for the spaceship to function properly is also down there. This alien family, apparently scientists, are trying to fix it. And the cylinder that Wickes had found is the key. So basically all these aliens want is to fix their ship and leave the planet Earth. This is also in the interest of humanity, right? However, with all these restrictions, laws and absurd bureaucracy, this is almost impossible. Now Wickes finds out that his arm can be reversed, but the only way to do that is to recover the cylinder that he has basically stolen two days ago, making his situation even more absurd. A sweet scene that we encounter here that I want to mention is that the alien child is intrigued by Wicca's arm. He stretches out his next to Wicca's, trying to say, hey look, we aren't that different, implying that racism is always just a choice. But Wicca's being the selfish and opportunistic person that he is, pushes away the kid. However, that is possible, I don't know. All that he wants is his old life, not understanding that to achieve that, he might need to give something in return. If I were him, I would team up with these aliens, form an alien militant group, arm myself with these super weapons and then storm the MNU. I would hijack that cylinder, fix the ship and then leave Earth together with these aliens, because that, ladies and gentlemen, would be a win-win situation. However, if you are more of an alien pacifist, which is fine as well, then you could try to mediate between the races, right? If you can get out a video message telling your story and that the aliens are actually trying to fix their ship and leave, but the MNU doesn't let that happen, the global outcry would be massive. Change would be inevitable. It might not be tomorrow, but it sure as hell would lead to a sooner happy end. But anyway, Wickes hasn't made up his mind yet and leaves, but during the following night he gets the shock of a lifetime. When he undresses himself, he sees that his transformation is moving forward quicker than he thought. If I were in this situation, I would either kill myself or, like mentioned, team up with the alien family, because they seem to be legit cool beings. Now, here's where stuff becomes cool. Wickes decides to team up with them anyway. The plan is to enter the MNU facility and steal the cylinder with the black fluid inside. To do that, they need guns. So what Wickes does is ask for help from the Nigerian gangsters. So far so good. I would do the same thing. But when he arrives, he isn't welcomed very nicely. He's almost killed, but the mob boss is intrigued by Wickes' arm, asking him how he achieved this. This dude wants nothing more than to become an alien himself. That is some crazy enthusiasm and in all actuality a very important aspect that Wickes doesn't take any leverage of. So what happens is this. Wickes, who is about to get killed, grabs one of the Ratchet and Clank weapons lying next by. He shoots his oppressors down, gaining him the respect that he deserves. The mob boss asks Wickes how he got transformed, but our character just ignores that question and flees. Now in my opinion, this was a huge mistake. What I would have done is the following. I would have hired these militants for my mission, promising that if they can get us a cylinder, we would help them to turn into aliens, which as we all know is entirely possible. We are the living proof. Boom, let's go. But Wickes doesn't think that far. Nope. 
What he does is he teams up with a red vest alien and storms to MNU in tag team fashion. Because why not? Things are getting fun. I'm gonna find him. Equipped with the coolest weapons of the galaxy, the duo moves in. Wicca still remembers the security code, so entering the base isn't a problem. The soldiers they face off are no problem either since they have superior weapons. As they move in and get to the underground lab where aliens are experimented on, they start to look for the cylinder. However, our buddy is shocked by what he sees. The cruelty is too much for him. He can't understand why this has happened to his species. It was only a malfunction that made them land here, and no ill intent. Wickes finds a cylinder but at the same time a squad of elite soldiers are storming the lab. A hefty fight breaks out. It takes a couple of moments until our friend can get a grip and both of our characters can escape. With a self-made alien grenade, they make it through the car park, hijacking an SUV and then rush back to District 9. Things are about to turn around, but not before Wickes once again screws things up. Once they make it back home, Wickes demands for his arm to be reversed. The alien tells him though that this isn't that simple and it will need some time, namely 3 years. Now Wickes can't believe it and doesn't want to accept it, but in my humble opinion 3 years is rather okay, no? I mean, the most important thing for now is to get out of here alive anyway. This discussion can be continued later on. There are still a few dozen soldiers behind us trying to murder us. However, Wickes and his anger problem aren't rational. He grabs a piece of wood and slams our friend over the head, causing him to faint. Wickes enters the basement and shuts out the alien. The soldiers enter and take him captive. But he is an amazing guy and doesn't snitch on us, probably because his child is down here with us. Seeing this little alien being worried sick about his dad upstairs is heartbreaking. At this moment, I just hope so bad for a happy ending. In any way, Wickes activates a small spacecraft and prepares for an escape. Don't sit down now, you can't play it now. That is ridiculous, okay? This is a very dumb move. How could he possibly maneuver that thing without any knowledge? And that is exactly what happens. He gets shot down within the first minute and crashes down to Earth. This spacecraft, ladies and gentlemen, was the only hope for peace there was. But one man is enough to f*** things up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vickis. The best solution would have been clearly to enter the basement with the alien buddy and escape together, and only then proceed with everything else. So at this point, everything seems lost. The alien and Vickis himself were captured and transported away. But luckily, we got the Nigerian gangs, right? The gang from before cuts off the escape route and hijacks both convoys. A fight breaks out, but eventually they're able to capture Wickes and take him back to their mob boss. Things are getting messy. Who are the good guys and who are not? In any way though, I would prefer to mingle with those Nigerians any day than those MNU bastards. But before Wickes gets eaten up because of some voodoo shit, uh, maybe I reconsider, the alien child back in the small spacecraft activates a remote control system that moves the mother ship into a position directly over the smaller spacecraft. This kid is awesome. At the same time, the alien weapons within the Nigerian HQ start to activate themselves as well. A huge robot becomes alive and well, cleans the place swiftly and thoroughly. Only Wickes is spared, since according to the robot, at least he is a peer. Then the robot opens its doors and basically insists on him entering it. Wickes hesitates, I wonder why. Why would you hesitate to enter that robot? Nothing can stop you while you wear it. Why wouldn't you want to become a Gundam? Jesus. Well, in any way, Wickes can't resist the urge because we can understand and it's showtime. He smashes his opponents as if they were kitchen flies, giving me the satisfaction that I've been looking for 1 hour and 29 minutes. Thank you. He rescues his alien friend and they make it over to the spacecraft where the little kid is waiting. How about that? Things are about to change and I love it. But even though Wickes has been a sorry b for the most part of this story, he at least does the right thing when it becomes necessary. Thumbs up for that. Before they arrive at the spacecraft and the family reunites again, Wickes leaves and enters the combat again, trying to make up some time for his alien friends. Now they activate the beam of light that slowly beams the spacecraft up to the mothership. The question though remains, can they make it in time? Well, Wickes is fighting desperately. His only goal by now is to save those that have helped him during his most difficult times. And he achieves that. The alien family eventually makes it into safety up above. They activate the mothership and leave. For now. 
I can't wait for District 10. At the same time though, Wickes is being slowly killed off. In the last showdown, he faces off the elite soldier that has made his life miserable. But before he can finish him off, Wickes' new peers jump in and rip apart his enemy. In one of the ending scenes, we can see a prawn scavenging the trash place, which implies that this is probably Wickes himself by now. Well, I guess we'll find out in District 10, which has been confirmed just uh, recently. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I love this movie. Go watch it if you can. And uh, yeah, binge another one. I see you guys in a few days. Peace.